All right, May June 18, paper 42. This is a bit longer question, okay, because you have to write a three-mark explanation. So if you are new to A2, writing explanation in A2 is a little bit more complicated, all right? So first we read this, the statement first. During melting, a solid becomes liquid with little to no change in volume. So if you have learned guesses, and if you have not, then you will learn it very soon. Uh, when there's little or no change in volume, there's no work done on or by the gas. Okay, no work done on and no work done by the gas. Because P delta V ma, work done is P delta V ma. So there, you learn this in AS chapter 6. You will also learn it again in A2 chapter 10, ideal gases. So it says use kinetic theory. And now whenever you see kinetic theory, uh, we need to talk about the particles and the bond and the kinetic energy and all that. Okay, if you never talk about the particles, the bonds, you don't get marks. Okay, you maybe get one mark. La. We like to call this PT marks or, okay, la, at least you write something that makes sense. I don't want to give you zero. So you kind of like want to score a high score in these kind of things. So kinetic theory is a hint to tell you to write from your understanding of kinetic theory, which is how a particle behaves during the melting process. So you are trying to explain why you need thermal energy. You are not trying to explain why there is no change in temperature. Use kinetic theory to explain why during the melting process thermal energy is required, although there is no change in temperature. Okay, uh, you are not trying to explain why there is no change in temperature. You are trying to explain why you need heat, although there is no change in temperature. Slight variation, it will change your answer. Okay, so we can first start off by saying that uh, you know during melting. By the way, I'm rewriting it so that it's in the thicker form. Lah. Okay, so during melting, your bonds will be broken. Okay, or you could say that the bonds are, bonds between the atoms are broken. Not all of them are broken, but some of them are broken. Okay, or weakened. Okay, so because of this, potential energy of the atoms or the molecules or the particles is increased. You're learning physics, we don't separate atoms, molecules, particles. So because you are increasing the potential energy, the potential energy have to come from somewhere. Okay, so we need thermal energy to increase the potential energy because you cannot create energy. Ma. So the first point is during melting, the bonds are broken. Second point, because the bonds are broken, potential energy increase. Third point, in order to increase the potential energy, we need thermal energy. Okay, because Another way for the gas to get energy is to receive it from atmosphere. So maybe you compress the gas. So I don't know whether you know or not, when you compress something, you can change its state. For example, your red side can is liquid, but when you spray it out, it's gas. You know, the spray, hair spray, red side spray, aerosol sprays, okay? So you could change pressure by changing the state. But in this case, because your volume didn't change, so you are not compressing or changing the volume. All right, so here, um, you can say that there's, since there's no work done against or by the atmosphere. So the last point is always hardest to get. It's very easy to get 1 out of 3, pretty straightforward to get 2 out of 3, quite hard to get 3 out of 3. Okay, so here is the examiner report. That I like to show students when they talk about explanation. Candidates at this level, uh, wow, they shade you already at this level. You are at the final level before you enter uni. Uh. Okay, that's why I say candidate at this level need to be clear and accurate in their use of terminology and avoid colloquial languages. So colloquial language means common language, such as overcoming forces. Okay, so credit was available for establishing why there is a need to have input of energy because that was the question. Why do we need energy although the temperature didn't change? Okay, It is not possible to gain full credit without reference to particles in some form because kinetic theory. Okay, So first you need to discuss the bonds are broken or weakened forces between the molecules. Second, you need to talk about how during melting potential increase, potential energy of the molecule increase. Okay, so we will also give you marks, okay, if you mention that because the volume of the substance doesn't change, we need some input energy because it cannot be done through work. So the input energy has to be provided by thermal energy. Uh, when you are done with chapter 10, this will make a little bit more sense because uh, we actually have a law to tie all of this together. But this is also pretty logical, right? All right. And finally, 
you can see a significant can minority of candidate misread the question and give an explanation to why the temperature does not change during melting and not why we need heat during melting. Okay, so I uh I uh, don't like that la so big liao, you are very experienced in sitting for exam. Okay, so please hello cannot please read the question, level up now, okay? So yep. Anyway, they're saying that you are high level D, so please level up yourself. Okay, let's look at the last part of the question. Assuming no exchange of thermal energy to the surrounding, very nice. Okay, so this one, uh, you have an aluminium can 160 gram and 330 gram of warm water at temperature 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so a mass of 448 grams of ice at negative 18 degrees Celsius is taken from the freezer and put into the water. The ice melts and everybody has a final equilibrium temperature of 23 degrees Celsius. So the water is 38 degrees Celsius, the ice is negative 18 degrees Celsius, the aluminium can, which is also in contact with the water, will have the same temperature as the water, 38 degrees Celsius. Okay, so from here, definitely there is net heat flow. The heat will flow from the hotter water and aluminium into the colder ice, right? Okay, so you can say that the heat gained by ice will be equal to heat loss by water and aluminium, all right? So assuming there's no exchange in thermal energy surrounding, what is the loss in thermal energy of the can and warm water? And there's no state change. So no state change will use specific heat capacity. Lah. Q is MC delta theta, okay? So from here, you can put the mass, okay? Lor? So you say, okay, the mass of water and can, uh, the water is 330, the mass of the can is 160 gram. Can, uh, miss, and I convert to kg. Okay, you hold on to your horses first. Uh. Let's check the specific heat capacity to see whether we need to convert or not, okay? So one thing you would notice is that the given specific heats uh, are in joule per gram, so keeping gram is okay. But you will notice that the specific heat capacity for aluminium and water are obviously not the same law. Okay, so mass can remain as gram. They are not the same. So meaning you cannot add them like that. It's very weird. So wrong liao. Aluminium and water have different specific heat capacity. So you have to split them up. So Q is MC delta theta for water plus MC delta theta for aluminium. So we will then substitute the mass of the water, 330, times the specific heat capacity of the water, which is 4.18 grams, I mean joule per gram. And the change in temperature will be 38 minus 23, because the final temperature is 23 degrees Celsius. Repeat the same process for the aluminium can again. All right, so 160 gram for aluminium can. Change in temperature also will be the same law for aluminium clam and water. Alright, so then you can press your calculator, you get 22875 joule, which is around 2.3 times 10 to the power of 4 joule. So now calculate the specific latent heat of fusion of ice. Okay, now here I would like you to pause the video uh, and think a bit. There is state change. Can I just use Q equal to ML? And this Q directly equal to ML? Pause and think first. I give you a few seconds. Like you say yes, then hmm, there are a few things that you forgot to look at. For example, can negative 18 degrees Celsius ice straight away become water? Cannot leh. We need to bring it first to melting point. So we need to bring negative 18 degrees Celsius ice to 0 degrees Celsius ice. And then we need to change it to 0 degrees Celsius water. And then we need to change it to 23 degrees Celsius water. So it's a many step process. A lot of times students forget that the temperature needs to be changed first. Okay, you cannot lah. Alright, so please remember that the ice, negative 80 degrees Celsius, we need to convert to 0 degrees Celsius ice. And 0 degrees Celsius water, we need to convert to 23 degrees Celsius water. So whenever there is a change in temperature without a state change we use mc delta theta for ice ml vaporization and mc delta theta for water bearing in mind that the specific heat capacity c for ice and water is not the same so you actually add heats in three stages so q1 plus q2 plus q3 all this heat is absorbed from water and aluminium we assume that didn't absorb from surrounding which is the assumption in the question 
Okay, so we can say heat gain by ice is equal to mc delta theta by ice plus mc delta theta by water. Okay, and then you can see here if I want to find the mc delta theta for ice, I can 2.29 na or whichever term you want to use. But thankfully, the mass is the same. Okay, the mass of the ice is 48 grams, remains the same. And the change in temperature for ice right now is 18 to 0. So you put 18 minus 0. Lo. You factorize the M already. So what is left here is L, which you are looking for. And then specific capacity of water, 4.18. Change in temperature of water is 0 degrees Celsius to 23 degrees Celsius in the final equilibrium position. Alright, so from here you can simplify and you can get a value of L which is 343 Joule per gram. If you decide to use a different value, like 2.3 times 10 to the power of 4, your L will be 350 Joule per gram. So generally, I would suggest in A2, when you check answer, right, if you round to 2SF, you get more or less the same value, you should be fine. Okay. The more important thing is, please show your working and make sure that the rounding follows the, the values, the raw values that you substitute. Okay, so that would be the last and final example. And you can see this 4 marks a bit hard to earn, right? Yes, correct. This is a hard question. So this question is actually testing everything. It's testing whether you understand uh, there's a heat transfer during state change and there's also heat transfer during, uh, I mean, when you increase temperature, of course. So that's it for this chapter. Please go and try past your question. Every past your question is slightly different. And I wish you all the best. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Goodbye.